we're doing this we are doing the video <laughs> that I've been trying to put off but also if I don't do this now I kind of will just always be lingering so yeah assalamualaikum hey everyone I hope you're doing well as you can tell by the title today I'm going to be talking about Dubai and teaching abroad and how I really feel mainly because I have been getting a couple of questions and DMs recently asking about the whole situation like I said in my last get ready with me I realized I never actually addressed it so yeah my hope is to make this video talk about it in one video and then never really speak about it again <laughs> I'm joking not not never but like you know if anyone asks I'll be like oh I've actually made a video on it if you are not new to my channel you will know all about <laughs> this whole journey that I have gone on but just in case you are new or you're just wondering let's start from the start so when I was literally I want to say 16 years old and I was thinking what do I really want to do in my life I kind of had two career routes in mind the first one was going down the psychology route but I've always really really liked working with children and when I was 17 years old I got my first job ever as a tutor for Explore Learning which is a tuition company which is based generally only in Sainsbury stores in England um, but it's basically like an online tutoring thing where I was tutoring children from the ages of 4 to 14 so quite a big wide age ranger um, but I really did enjoy it even though it was exhausting the thing is working with children like, every single day is different there's definitely challenges involved but it's such a fulfilling role you really go into work and feel like you're making a difference and you build, you're building bonds you're increasing their confidence it's just a lovely role in that sense and even if we want to like just step back for a second and go even further back both my grandmothers were actually teachers as well and they both ended up becoming head teachers obviously this was in their time and this was in Pakistan but yeah they were teachers and then my, my dad's side two of his sisters are teachers and on my mom's side one of her cousins is a teacher as well so in a way I kind of felt like it was also in the family why like one of my roots was always going to be teaching and then the other route was kind of going to go down the psychology route so then I took psychology for one of my A levels really enjoyed it and I decided when it came to uni time to go for a psychology degree because I just knew that my options would be a little bit wider than going down a teaching route I went to uni I got my degree I did my PGCE straight afterwards the school based route which I've got plenty of videos and blog posts on all the way from the interview up until you know becoming an NQT and then also I've got quite a lot of content on my whole teaching journey so far but what I have not said so far and this is so rambly guys and I'm sorry by the way I am fasting today and it is 7 37 so in about an hour inshallah we'll be opening our fast so yeah but one of the main reasons why I also went into teaching was because it's always been a dream of mine to live in a Muslim country for a short period of time at least. I always, always, always wanted to move abroad and just have that experience of every single food shop you go into being halal, of having the azan, playing five times a day, throughout the day um you know of having your working hours adjusted to the lifestyle of being a muslim like it just seemed like a dream and when i was about i want to say 17 as well i started researching you know how i could combine my love of teaching working abroad and that's when i discovered the very lucrative at the time career of working abroad as a british teacher especially in the middle east and bearing in mind this was almost eight nine years ago now is when I first started looking into this the starting salaries were mind-blowing they were literally I think around 30 to 35k starting salary at that time it was much higher than your average UK starting salary as a teacher and on top of that they would pay for your flights they'd pay for accommodation so rent free it was a tax-free salary so you were basically getting to keep all the money and they'd also pay for your medical bills if you had a family if you had kids they would pay for your, your children's education as well because obviously everything's private out there it just seemed like the absolute dream so in the back of my mind that was always my goal when i was 23 i also got married and i discussed this with Bukhara, who's my husband um, way before we got married you know I was very clear like this is my goal these are my dreams this is what I really want to do and you know if marrying me is gonna mean that that's not part of your life plan then I don't really want to get married anytime soon or you don't need to wait for me I was pretty blunt you know like it was a proper dream of mine 
for a long, long time. It's something I made dua for for a long time. I was very clear with that guy, and he was actually like very supportive. He was like, I would love to live in Dubai, um, in the Middle East. It would be amazing. Hot weather every day, vitamin D. Uh, it would just be brilliant. Like he was very supportive, which was brilliant. So yeah, I got married in December and then I basically, after I'd got married, started the process of applying for jobs in Dubai for the following academic year, which would be August 2019. I remember one of my first interviews was a couple of weeks before our honeymoon and then I had another interview when I was actually on my honeymoon in Dubai and it just felt like, oh my goodness, all my dreams are coming true right now. Like I've just got married, um, alhamdulillah, I'm so happy and I am pretty much really, really enjoying my job as it is. But also I'm about to go into my dream career, which is working in Dubai. And there was this British school who I interviewed with and the head teacher was from Britain. He'd been out there for a couple of years. And the first interview that was was in Dubai, it was a video interview. I was interviewed by a panel of three people. And alhamdulillah, I felt like it went well. I wasn't, you know, I'm never like overly optimistic. But Wakaira was telling me afterwards, he was like, I think you did really well. Like you were so confident in your answers. It sounded like you knew what you were talking about. I, I kind of did the interview and then didn't really give it too much thought. So I was like, I'm on my honeymoon. I want to enjoy the sights and the food and everything. And then two days later, we were in Bali. I remember like just refreshing my emails and I got an email saying congratulations we really really enjoyed your interview and we'd love to offer you a position in our school and this was a new school that was actually currently just being finished being built at this time but yeah they offered me a key social position and I I felt like literally I felt like all my birthdays had to come at once I was like so emotional I was so excited and it was just the most magical place in the world to find out this news in Bali, Indonesia, because if you guys saw the vlogs, if you guys have seen pictures of Bali, you'll know it's just gorgeous. So honestly, I really felt like nothing could go wrong. <laughs> like, alhamdulillah, it was just amazing. So this was in April, Easter holidays time, and then we have in the UK, or in England, we have up till May to give our resignation in town on Edison. Now, obviously, I didn't want to hand in my notice until everything had been confirmed. That like, yes, it offered me the job. Yes, I had accepted. And I remember getting a phone call from the principal and he was really positive, really encouraging. And it was just it was so exciting. But yeah, I, just, I still didn't want to hand in my res resignation in case anything happened. In the back of my mind, I was like, just in case, like, you know, I'll, I'll hold off and stuff. And then also we had SATs. So in England, obviously, like in year six to have sets and as a teacher that is such a stressful time of your life honestly I felt so drained and it was also Ramadan as well at the time so everything all at once was happening um, and then you know eventually as the weeks went on I stopped giving the interviews so I'd had about four or five interviews the three job offers that I'd had two of them were for Abu Dhabi and one of them was for Dubai and ideally we really wanted to move to Dubai and live in Dubai even though Abu Dhabi is not too far off but obviously they both have their pros and cons and if you've looked into this I'm sure you'll know you know more about that but either way for me to be honest it was like if it's a Muslim country you know that's paid you well then I'm, I'm good I'm, I'm going to go for it but obviously the, the one that I really wanted which was in Dubai that's the one that I'd been offered a job for and eventually the contract came through I read through it and all I don't know if I've explained this actually no I didn't explain this but the whole way through as well there is an agent that's working with you so you don't just kind of get in contact with the schools yourself the way it works is you submit your CVs to all these different websites. I was mainly primarily using The Guardian, um, but there's like a bunch of different sites. You just basically just search like Dubai jobs, British schools, and the year that you're searching in, and then you just keep submitting your CV. And then eventually what happens is these agencies pick your CV up and they're the kind of middlemen who go between you and the school. They arrange interviews, etc. The agent is the person who contacts you not the school usually but that's why I was quite surprised that the principal of this school had contacted me and had called me um, but 
I saw it as a positive sign because I was like, you know, I'm gonna be working in his school. It was really encouraging and positive to me at the time to be contacted by him. So then when I came back to England, you know, back to work, back to SATs, etc., then the agent was sort of keeping me in the loop with just like the sort of fine details of the contract, the the salary that we'd agreed on. Um, I did push for a higher salary because the salary I was being offered was like an AQT position salary, and I was like, no, this is my second year as a teacher. I definitely I'm gonna be bringing more to the table so I would like a higher salary finally eventually the contract came through I signed the contract everything was going absolutely smooth sailing then unfortunately the week after I handed in my resignation to the head teacher of the school that I was at I was told I needed to speak to the agent straight away urgent phone call I was in school I was packing up and I just felt my heart drop i called her i just i knew what she was gonna say even though there was no real reason for this to happen um you know there's no warning signs there's no red flags but yeah i just knew she was gonna say that there was a problem with, with the school and yeah that's what it was they they couldn't open in time they're really sorry but there's no job available anymore but they can offer me a job next year and i was so upset i was so i felt like all my dreams and all these years of like working hard and going towards this goal had just been swept under my feet and had been like pulled from underneath me and our plan had been to pack up the apartment to spend the summer with Bukhara's family and then to move to Dubai and within literally like two seconds that was all over so in answer to the whole question of you know how I feel how I really feel like I, I would be absolutely lying if I said there's not a part of me that still feels that doesn't feel upset like I do like I do it was my dream it was one of the biggest goals ever that I had and um, couldn't accept the fact that they just would take someone's dream like that like why would you offer someone a job and get them to the stage of signing a contract and then be like sorry actually there's no job here and then the worst thing was two weeks after this and I was still really upset and I started interviewing again for last minute positions now across the UAE because I was like I don't have a job in my school currently they've already you know replaced you and also I really want to go abroad like I really want this to happen so I started applying for other jobs and doing more interviews and you know the interviews were super early in the morning as well to account for the time difference and it was just it was a lot the same school came back to me through this agent and were like, we've got a sister school, it's an Indian-based curriculum though, would you consider applying there instead because we could do with a British teacher? So I was like, mm, okay, but can you guarantee me that there'll definitely be a job out there? And I actually didn't think to say that. Well, Gara was the one who was like, look, the way that they've handled the situation and treated you, we want written guarantee that we're going to go out there and there's going to be a job. And they literally turned around and said no we, we can't promise anything <sighs> I was just like well then no I'm not gonna put my name forward I'm not gonna get my hopes up again like I felt so crushed and so tiny and so I just felt horrible it's just what it was honestly like even now thinking about it I feel like oh my stomach's like this like just thinking about it so yeah, of course, like, there's still to this day, you know, it's literally been two years since then, now. There's still a part of me that feels a bit angry, and there's still a part of me that feels sad. But what I also now genuinely feel like is that, and I know that, I knew this then, but oh, I really truly understand it now, is that everything happens for a reason, and obviously... Who knew that we'd be hit by a pandemic in 2020? So the plan would have been for me to go out that summer and then the you know during the academic year would the pandemic would have started. Or my other plan was to keep applying, keep applying, keep applying and get out there for January, which I was doing, and it was so stressful because there was just nothing coming back. And yeah, there was just there was no jobs coming back, and so then in the end, I ended up then also applying simultaneously to work as a teacher here in Scotland. Alhamdulillah, that all got sorted. Took ages, but got sorted. Got a job in Scotland last March, so that was a big blessing because I was slightly losing my mind, you know, with all these changes and then being unemployed and going from being super busy to having nothing to do, you know, and having a totally different setup. It just was not it's an advisable position, um, obviously everything happens for a reason as I keep saying so that was what it was meant to be for me but yeah I've you know so after speaking to family and stuff like having to go through a pandemic without any family support and 
also kind of still being newlyweds and going through all this change I don't know if we would have made it honestly I think it would have been really hard it would have really pushed us to the very limit and I already feel like during the pandemic we were pushed to the limit I really feel like that was such a hard time as it was so I think a big blessing was still being able to go and see my family and um, still being able to be near Aquarius family during the pandemic. Now, you know, I'm about to be 26, inshallah, and I kind of feel like, for me personally, the ship has sailed, and I know that that's not necessarily the case. And look, again, I just want to be really clear, like, this is my personal experience, this is my opinion, I'm not saying that anyone else shouldn't try to go abroad at all. Honestly, I'm not saying that at all. In fact, if you are single and you have recently qualified, go ahead. Like, I think it's such a good opportunity. But the way I feel now is that my priorities have changed. I am not looking for a full-time position within teaching. And if I was looking for a full-time position within teaching abroad, it would have to be for a really good salary. And honestly, you guys, the job market has completely changed. And I actually got an email from, like, one of, like I said, one of these agencies the other day. They were saying how, yes, the world's slowed down, but we still need teachers abroad, blah, 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 blah. And I replied and I was like, look, can you guys be shut up with me? Like, am I wrong or am I right in saying that? I feel like the job market has completely changed and like now in the UAE the salaries are completely low, the packages aren't even attractive at all, you're hardly getting anything compared to before right, like now you have to pay for your own flights but in some cases you have to share accommodation, you have to share a room in some cases, like it just doesn't seem as appealing as it did a couple of years ago and I was like look is that the truth and he was like yeah that's that's the honest truth. I actually want to find the email because it was so like cutthroat <laughs> and it was so blunt but you know I mean he was he was being honest and he was doing his job and you know he wasn't wrong to be blunt like that I suppose. So the guy's name is Aaron, he says, hi Ikri, you are right about the UAE, the job market has been flooded year on year and the opportunities and packages there have decreased as a result of that. But we recruit for the whole world and the overall picture is very different. We are advising anyone interested in packages and progression to look at a number of different locations and there's loads for them to go at. Anyone focused on the UAE and not wanting to consider other places will have to accept the deterioration job market there. And that is coming from a senior international consultant so basically that was that that was it that was kind of like the nail you know in the coffin that was my sort of last ray of sunshine hope <laughs> you know not to be negative but that was um because I don't want to move to China or Brazil or another country personally it's not for me the whole point was to move to a Muslim country and have that experience and yeah you could move to like Morocco or Egypt but also no, like that not for us personally. And obviously I've spoken to Bagar about it and and you know, we both said if something comes up in New Year, then yeah, we'd like to move there. But if it's not for us, it's not for us, it's not written, then it's not meant to be. And I've genuinely now I've come to a point of acceptance, Alhamdulillah. Like I am okay with it. Like it it is what it is. And at the end of the day, I'm working. I've got the ability to work on not just my teaching stuff, but also my passions are actually starting to pay bills now, which is amazing, which I would not have had the opportunity to do if I was in Dubai working full time. I can be near to my family, you know, I can go and visit them whenever I want to, which I wouldn't be able to do if I was living abroad. And also, like, looking forward, there's way more bigger and exciting things coming up for us. No, that is not a pregnancy announcement. We are not expecting a baby anytime soon. But yeah, um, there's just exciting things that are happening and those things we couldn't focus on if we were living abroad, in my opinion. Alhamdulillah, I genuinely feel like I've come to a place of peace and acceptance and calm. It definitely was a hard pill to swallow at the time and there have been many, many tears that have been poured out of these eyes about the whole situation so you know I'm not gonna sit here and be like yeah no I'm totally fine and I'm happy and it was so easy to accept because it definitely was not but genuinely like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners I just pray that one day inshallah in Jannah the weather is just perfect and not too hot to like Dubai and not too cold like the UK <laughs> you know like it, obviously Jannah's gonna be perfect right so that's where we're gonna get the perfect climate and the perfect everything inshallah 
and yeah I'm just grateful for my family I'm grateful for my health I'm grateful for opportunities that are around us if you guys have ever looked into moving abroad like what was your experience with looking into it have you found it I'd love to hear your experiences is it something you actually want to do are you watching this because you want to do this um, and if you do I genuinely from the bottom of my heart wish you the best of luck and I hope that you get the most amazing opportunity and experiences but just be aware that here in Britain like when we sign a contract you're kind of bound to it by law but in the UAE they do what they want so <laughs> I I'm, and unfortunately what I'd heard as well from other recruiters at the time was that my situation was not that uncommon unfortunately and it's not that unheard of so yeah just be prepared to have a little bit of heartache or a lot of heartache if you have a situation like mine um but I hope that none of you have to go through it honestly and yeah that's the end of this video. I don't know how to end this now. It's been such a long time since I filmed. You know what? It's 8 o'clock. I need to go and start preparing the fruit chart for Ufdali. So I will see you guys very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.